Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, thelandgeek.com. And on this week's roundtable podcast, we have almost all the usual suspects. We've got the technician, Eric Peterson. Eric, how are you? I'm good. Happy to be here. Good to see good, you, Mark. Good to see you. And by the way, listeners, don't don't fast forward this introduction part. Because I know I do that when I listen to podcasts. I'm like, okay, we know he's going to introduce Bossman, Zeno, Taria, Landon, Tate, a bunch of things about Scott Todd, and then get to the podcast. No, it's it's nice to hear the introduction because you don't know what they're going to say in the introduction. It might be a pearl of wisdom, which I would have put Scott Bossman on. Hello. Or on it could the, just, uh, it's it could possible. Just be, Dude, buddy, Nightcap OG, how are you? Doing great, Mark. Good to be here. Good, good to uh, good to see you, Zen Master Mike Zeno. How are things? Going great, thank you. Good to see you, Taria Harris. She is furious. Taria, put in the reps, Harris. How are you? I'm well. How are you? I'm well. Is your partner in crime next to you? He is. All right, Landon. <laughs> Co- wait, is it Coach Landon? I still don't know what Landon's nickname is going to be. It has to come organically. I don't know. Just call them biceps. <laughs> yeah. I love that one. I like Anyways. That. Uh, <laughs> they, by the way, if you're not coming to boot camp, you won't get the joke. Because you, <laughs> you won't know. All right. We've got a great topic. So um, for our coaching clients, we have a WhatsApp chat. And so each week we'll ask them what have their wins been for the week. And I'm just going to pick out a few. So this is from Raj, who said, uh, last week, purchased wholesale for 4000 uh, a few months ago, sold on terms uh, for $15,891, um, $447 down, $297 a month for 52 months. A solid deal. But then he sold this one. And he didn't want to report it until it was like done. He purchased for ten thousand dollars, sold it on terms for fifty two thousand four hundred sixty three dollars, got nineteen forty seven down, six hundred ninety two a month for seventy three months. Tate, even you would be like, "That's a nice deal." Yeah, I'm. I'm definitely very, very happy with those numbers. That's amazing. That's a good deal. So, Larry Morell. Larry said he bought for $4,250 and sold on terms for $2,000 down, $450 a month for 72 months. That, like, dude, buddy, that's a solid deal. That is a solid deal. I, I, love, I love the passive income. $450 a month for 72 months. Mike Zeta, what would you do with $450 a month for the next 72 months? Well, fifty a month for the next seventy-two months. Um, I mean, I would probably buy myself uh, a car. Yeah, it's a nice car, thing, right? A car. I would. I would. I, it would be like maybe I get myself a Tesla. A maybe I get myself. Some, I'll get something. Something hip. Well, I, I think that's cool. Taria, what about you? What would you do with that money? Four fifty a month. Um, I probably increase my Spanish lessons that I'm taking, and instead of twice a week, I'd go three, four times a week. <laughs> Muy bien. <laughs> <laughs> my my tutor would be happy. <laughs> uh, como des, como se dice? Why are you taking Spanish lessons in Espanol? <laughs> Why Spanish? Yeah, I like Spanish. It's a it's a beautiful mucho language. Gusto. It's mucho gusto. Um, mucho gusto. Uh, Matt Nunn. I can't decide if the if Mark speaking <laughs> Spanish is worse than Mark, you know, copying Mike Zeno's accents. Or any of the other accents that he's done on this podcast, I, we need to cat- We need to have the the listeners poll in here. Like, please give us some feedback. Give us. Oh, 
you know, you're, 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 you're such a foreign language snob. I'm sorry I'm not, com- yeah. you know, completely fluent is, in Spanish like you, Tate. Listen, I'm Tate, just speaking you Spanish. say it. That was awful. Like, I mean, as your friend, I just want you to know that that was no one. Like, you're you going to watch this on video, though, because. Yeah, to see Mark's face, he's so happy. Like, if you listen to this podcast, go watch the YouTube video because he's just so that. happy that's speaking that's Spanish. That's like, it's like, I like. What do you like? <laughs> no, no more. No mas, por favor. Como se dice. No mas, por favor. <laughs> this is, by the way, I want to, I guys want to tell you, this is what you get from two years of high school Spanish. Well, this is what you get for skipping me on the intro. I, I skipped you? <laughs> yeah. Wow. I just got done saying how important the intro was, and then you skipped me. You know what? <laughs> Talking I, about Landon's biceps. I, yeah. I apologize. Goodbye. Yeah. Tate Litchfield. He got, he got distracted. I, I love it when he you call distracted. me Big Papa, Tate Litchfield, <laughs> who is fluent in Spanish. And by the way, just to give Tate props, by the way, this is the friend you want in your corner. Because he's the guy that's going to tell you when you have something in your teeth at lunch. Right? He's the guy that's going to tell you. <laughs> that's a good friend. Right, it's a good friend. Don't try speaking Spanish. It's horrific. <laughs> Don't try a Boston accent. My ears are bleeding. These are the people you want in your life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're you're welcome. And, you know, it's out of love. It's a it's a love relationship, and right? I feel it actually. I mean, talk about <laughs> ho- someone helping me be the best version of myself. It's true. I I you know, I think we need to have like a whole podcast on just being honest. You know what Mm -hmm. I mean? Like how many times do we sugarcoat things in life? And it doesn't really do the person any good. That's why I love, that's why I love land coaching so much. We don't sugarcoat it. That ad won't sell your property. We'll tell you, (laughs) right? You're not posting enough ads. We don't sugarcoat it. Anyways, I digress. Uh, Matt Nunn, seven proper, sold seven properties this week. So I asked them, hey, what were your best platforms to sell property on? And so this is going to be our topic for this week is what marketing platforms are working as of now. So I'll tell you what they said, and then we'll go around and see what's working for you guys. And we'll start with, the Zen master because he loves going first. Yeah. All right. So Larry wrote buyers list and Facebook for me right now. Matt Nunn wrote email list in previous buyers. And then Raj said one from Craigslist and the other one land.com. Zen master. For your marketing, where are you selling properties right now? What's your marketing platform? That's why I love that Craigslist popped back up like that. That's kind of cool. That's, mm-hmm. We haven't heard that name in a while, have we? No. It's so, gone the way of that eBay. Name. That's gone the way of eBay. <laughs> eBay, bid for assets. <laughs> I'm going to agree with Larry Merrill. You know, um, going with the buyer's list, right, uh, for sure, and Facebook. That's where most of our sales have been coming from recently we get you know, they, they do sprinkle in from the land sites land moto and so on and so forth but i i mean um as much as facebook can be an aggravation i know we all love it but it produces you know um you just got to get that into a system and uh the buyers list it's like as you say mark it's the one thing that we own right they can't take it away from us they can't tell us uh to to uh get off the platform so to speak yeah it's it is the the, the most important asset it is the one that you own and for those of you that are listening and are like, what's a buyer's list? So a buyer's list is using a software program. Let's say it's Constant Contact or AWeber, MailChimp, one of these third-party softwares that are what they would say is the good neighborhoods for your internet service provider. So those emails will get delivered and they have to be permission-based. So typically if you go to uh, a website, let's just pick on Eric, like landopia.com. You'll see in exchange for your email, he's going to give you something of value. And then it's permission. And then the buyer's list, that permission, it, you can then email them and it'll get delivered 
to their email in inboxes. So we're not spamming people saying, hey, we got property for sale. These are people that have already raised their hand and are interested in what we have to offer. Um, dude, buddy, Nightcap OG, what's working for you? All right, so I looked at my last 10 sales over about the last month or so. Uh, four are from the buyer's list, with one being a previous buyer. And then after that, I'm evenly distributed. I got two from Facebook, two from Landmoto, and two from Landflip. Fantastic. Fantastic. Taria Harris. I was just pulling up ours um, off the top of my head. I think the la Facebook has always been just a, a good platform for us as irritating as it is. We tend to do about 40, 50% of our deals on Facebook. Um, but after that, um, our buyers list and then uh, land flip. And then land flip. Okay. You know, it's funny because... Landflip has not gotten any love, I don't think, in years on this podcast. And now it's starting to get a little love. Maybe they're doing some different marketing. I don't know. Tria? Potentially. And I think some of our properties in certain areas do better on there than others. So it may also be just what area your properties are in. Some platforms tend to do better than others. Okay. Great. Great. And as always, we have to give love to landmoto.com our platform of choice for sure uh eric peterson the technician what's working for you today well we we follow that philosophy of we want to be everywhere um and because we're everywhere we see sales from everywhere so looking at the last eight to ten sales i'm seeing them from land.com I'm seeing them from our website. I'm seeing them from Landmoto. Uh, we've got one Facebook, uh, a Craigslist, Land Century, Land Flip. Um, so everyone <laughs> is pretty much represented there. Um, but uh, I think, let's see, we had two from Land Century, which, you know, traditionally, if I'm if I'm being honest, is is not that great of a platform for us. Um, but what we do tend to see is is we'll get, I don't know, a handful of sales a year from that platform. Um, and for what we pay, it's worth it to us to continue to market there. Um, the lands.com continues to just, you know, be a steady platform, land, land moto as well. Um, so yeah, I mean, a little bit of everybody. I, I guess the one thing I'll add, you know, I, Facebook is getting lots of praise, but from my perspective, Facebook is not working as well for us anymore. Um, I would say over the last, I don't know, three to six months, we've seen a decline in the number of leads we bring in from Facebook. And we're, we're not putting as much attention on that platform anymore either. Um, and Craigslist is, is one of those platforms that we're, we're looking at again. And it's, look it's working okay. We've, we've had some sales. Mm -hmm. It's... Uh... I mean, it just goes to show you, I mean, you have to be platform agnostic because they constantly mm -hmm. change. You have to constantly adapt and, and be looking at these other platforms. Uh, I love it when you call me Big Papa, Tate Litchfield. So, yeah, I mean, I don't need to really add much more than what everybody else has said. I mean, our, our approach is we want to be everywhere, much like Eric. Eric and every, everybody else on the podcast, uh, looking at our most recent sales, uh, our buyers list has been treating us really well. And uh, we do see a lot of uh, results off paid platforms, um, Landmoto and the land. That tends to be uh, some predictable uh, sales generating platforms for us. Uh, we are dabbling in Craigslist once again. It's uh, it's a labor of love there. We are seeing mixed results. Um, sometimes it's worth the pain and other times it's not. Um, but Facebook is always an uphill battle for us. I think it has to do with us trying to um, have too many chefs in the kitchen, a lot of VAs, a lot of room for errors, 
lot of moving parts and pieces. And so we often, uh, uh, just totally honest, I'm I'm in Facebook jail every single day of the, the year with one account or another. We're always in Facebook jail. It doesn't scare us anymore, but it is just part of uh, part of doing business there. Yeah, I'm I'm trying to find the translation for Big Papa in Spanish. <laughs> oh, please do, please on the, do <laughs> on the trans on the translate app. It just it's it, it's not helping because it's saying Big Gra- Bad Grande Papa. Grande, that, that's pretty good actually. Because now I'm going to be saying I love it when you call me Big Papa in Spanish only. Oh, going boy. for. It. Uh, I love my job. No, I love, I love that I get to do this for free. I mean, it just makes it all worthwhile. <laughs> all right. Well, I thought that was definitely educational, but now it's time to go to Taria and ask her for her tip of the week. A website, a resource, <laughs> what? a book, something actionable. For the auto passive income listeners to go improve their businesses, improve their lives. Before she gives that tip of the week, though, I have to Wait give a, a shout out to our. Wait team. a minute. I don't think it's Taria's turn anymore. It's I didn't think so either. On the podcast. Thank you, Eric. Thank yeah, but where's you, Eric. Landon? Sitting next to me. I see All his right. face here. He's he's representing. Oh. So he's representing. I I do it. All right. Let's, so Landon's <laughs> got to give the tip of the week. But before he does, I have to give a shout out to our sponsor, which is Flight School. Learn how the next 16 weeks can transform your life. Go up that mountain of land investing quickly, safely, efficiently with Scott Todd as your Sherpa. Oh, yeah. That flight school investment ain't going to cost you nothing. Guaranteed. You're going to make it back 180 days or less. Just show us your work. Go to landgeek.com forward slash training to schedule a call. The landgeek.com forward slash training to learn more. Landon. Mark, <laughs> what is your tip of the week? Well, Mark, I'm going to always come through for you because I'm clutch. That's what I do. Now, awesome. I'm reading a book right now. It's called The Great Mental Model. And right now, it's only on volume one. But it's like, uh, it's, it's a book with like, it's about premises and ideas about how you can focus and like people that have just in history, just have had important um ways that they train their minds and how they, you know, their way that they use it in business. And so it gives great examples of how their success has kind of benefited from it. So I recommend it to anybody. There's like uh, three books, I believe in this series. I'm only on book one, um, but it's pretty good. So that's, that would be my tip of the week. The great mental model. Who's the author? Uh, I was re- <sighs> you, now you're, now you're, now you put me on the spot. Yeah, that's okay. I'm going to look it up. <laughs> Shane, <laughs> to go back Shane and look. Parrish. <laughs> Shane Parrish. Yes. yes. So Shane Parrish has a great podcast, The Knowledge Project. And oh, yeah. he's all about these mental models. And, yes. and, and thinking more clearly. That's a great tip of the week. And if you guys haven't checked out Shane's podcast, he's a Canadian. He gets really big intellectual guests. He has not had me on the podcast yet, so, you know, (laughs) but you can't judge him for that. But otherwise, he has great guests, for sure. Um, Eric, what do you think? Pretty good tip of the week. Yeah, I'm going to have to check it out. Dude, buddy, how are your mental models? Well, I, I'm sh- sure they need work uh, <laughs> in, the, in that continual process of evolution, right? So uh, it's definitely something I would check out. I have a simple mental model that has served me very well. And the Zen master, I think, will... I have one too, actually. Second, second this. It's that I know nothing. Mm. And to go into every, everything with a beginner's mind. And once I have that, I've, I've eliminated all my biases. And then from there, I can figure it out on my own, assuming I just know nothing. What do you think, Zen Master? 
I think this is why you're so good at Spanish. <laughs> I mean, it's not, it's, which, when, you know, when you're a, a nueva beginner in Spanish. But you know what? No. You're happy. You have beginner's mind, Mark, as they stay in Zen. Been. You have beginner's mind. You're happy. You, you, it doesn't bother you if you mess up a little bit. That's why, I, I, honestly, what I love about, you, you'll do things at boot camp and here, like you go out there and, and go on the limb and not be afraid because you're enjoying the moment. So, yeah, I think you're right. He is very Zen-like with that. Thank you. Thank you. Hopefully, cancel culture will not catch up with me. <laughs> That's which is interesting because I'm I'm reading this book that I'm really loving right now called Status Games by Will Store, and the game that they're playing in cancel culture because no one likes cancel culture. You have a very small group that that are doing this online, and they're playing a prestige game and a dominance game, or a virtue game and a dominance game. And they're really good at it. So it's uh, it taps into something very fundamental to us uh, from long ago. And it's rearing its ugly head uh, again. So I thought I'd throw that out there in case I do get canceled for my, my poor use of Espanol. Uh, dude, buddy, what's your mental model? No, I just think, uh, you know, I've said this before, like I say it to my patients all the time, you know, if, if you, if you don't feel like you're growing or if you don't feel like you're moving forward, look at where you were a month ago. And if you're no better than you were a month ago, you need to change something. But if you are better than where you were, it gives you perspective too, Right. Like a lot of people don't think they're better, but when they look at the data compared to a month ago, mm -hmm. right, uh, they're better. So that's kind of that's kind of my mantra over the years with patience, my business, being a dad, being a husband, whatever. You know, am I better than I was a month ago? That's kind of that's kind of my thing. I love that. I love that. Eric, do you have a mental model? No, I was just thinking about that. <laughs> No. Nothing comes to mind immediately. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Tate? Uh, there's room for improvement, I guess. Yeah. Uh, Tria, Landon, mental models? I don't know if I have a mental model. I um, guess I'm just trying to keep my mental faculty. So whatever I can do to stay sharp, I'm trying to do because um, it's dulling out some so i don't have one a strategy yet though so pretty much all of us need to get this book done so we yeah. can start ado adopting some mental models you know charlie munger from berkshire Iron hathaway is famous for his mental models and these these shortcuts of of how to think about a problem so they are very useful and speaking of very useful Scott Todd, the brain, the professor, your flight school Sherpa has just joined the very tail end of the podcast. Scott Todd. He's fully late. How nice yeah, to I show thought up. I was here for a coach's meeting. Honestly, I don't, I'm walking <laughs> on something I don't even know I'm talking about here. Right, just a quick question. Do you have a mental model? Uh, do I have a mental model? Like um, to, to solve, solve problems? To solve problems in life. Uh, I mean, I think I do. I mean, I believe that I do because I just try to think through the issue logically, um, whether it's like, okay, well, what's the next step or what's, what's the end result look like that. And I always do try to, um, you know, always thinking about, okay, well, if I do this, what, what will they do? Or if I do this, you know, how's this going to play out? So I try to think a couple steps ahead also as I go through this process. So basically you're playing chess in life while the rest of us are playing checkers. Uh, okay. You could say that, I guess. I mean, you know, all right, that's fair. I think that's a great, useful mental model. And uh, you missed it, but I've been trying to speak Spanish. 
Why? You didn't miss anything. Because Ter- because Teresa is taking Spanish lessons. <laughs> And I'm didn't jealous. go over well, Scott. It did not go it over did well. Not go over well. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, anytime, uh, you, you know, like th- there's a couple things that uh, I can laugh at Mark about. One of which is, I don't know, music selection at boot camp like Taylor Swift weekend or Hamilton weekend, um, you know, th- that type of a thing, uh, or ra- Rapper's Paradise weekend, one, one of those things. And also accents. When Mark gets around accents, you know, whether it's Mike Zeno or uh, Spanish or another language, I mean, I still have a little bit of, um, you know, uh, I don't know, re- re- memory recall when Mark spent, I don't know, a week in Jamaica and everything was, yeah, man. Uh, it's like, come on, man. No, you can't do yeah. that. Scott, this is why we're best friends. Is because I literally said the exact same. Whoa! Thing. We're best friends. It's official. There hey, you go, man. Scott, you go. Mock has a perfect Boston accent. He sounds just like me. No, See, he does. You guys didn't even know that I said no. that. You thought it was no, we Trust me, we know because well, we can Mark see it. it and... That's how bad this was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like really. He's gone. He just disappeared. Well, I want to thank the listeners and remind them the only way that we're going to have silly podcasts like this is if you do us three favors. Follow, rate, review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of that review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you for free a signed copy of Dirt Rich, and it really helps us. Hopefully, you found most of the podcasts useful, and uh, we appreciate you. One, two, three. Let, let, let freedom, freedom, freedom ring. 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 Almost did he say not bad in Espanol. I'm not Muy letting bueno. it go. Boy, boy, not bad. I mean, not bad. No bueno. No bueno. No, that's, that's <laughs> not good. That's no good. Bueno. No bueno. No bueno. No bueno. <laughs> Speaking of Spanish, I will be in Mexico City in a few weeks, which I'm super excited about. And now I should be actually downloading Duolingo so I don't make a total fool of myself. Duolingo, get Babbel. Babbel's good too. Babbel. But there's like translation apps now. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. They're impressive. They're really good, Mm -hmm. right? They're good. Tate, do you have a favorite one? Um, no, I, I, I mean, for Spanish, I, I don't need one. Um, but uh, you know, honestly, Google Translate works well. Um, they're all, they're all kind of the same. I know that sounds bad, but they all do the same thing. Okay, that's cool. Um, well, let's go do our meeting. So, so yeah, Todd can go have another donut. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Art of Passive Income podcast. Are you ready to learn how you can start building a passive income without renters, rehabs, renovations, or rodents? Schedule a free consultation at thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Let freedom ring.